Okay, so as you've seen, every single um, presentation has got a ski theme to it. So um, our one is Gondola to Gold, Uncovering Hidden Value on the Business Mountain. So today we're going to be uh, trying to help people understand what is business value to each, in, in, to, to each individual in an organization. You have a different view. And first of all, I suppose I'll introduce my... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So yes, intro of myself. I'm Chris Tab. If anyone doesn't know me already, uh, hardcore skier and hardcore data nerd. That's what I call myself. Um, and use the hashtag Mean Data Streets, uh, Mean Data Slopes at the moment for the theme of, of seeing a winter theme as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Working on the the basics of technology here. So I'm Matt Housley. I'm actually not even a mediocre skier. I'm a terrible skier, <laughs> but I'm really happy to be here. It's just. Beautiful location, fantastic to be up here. Um, I consider myself just a hardcore nerd in general. I actually have a PhD in mathematics, so I come from academia. Before I got into data, data science, machine learning, and such things, and uh, co-founded Ternary Data with Joe Reese, and uh, that should say CTO, sorry about that, and also wrote Fundamentals of Data Engineering, and also do a podcast called Monday Morning Data Chat with Joe. And uh, I recognize this is a very controversial topic. In fact, uh, Sol kind of subtweeted me earlier, and I think the reality is we probably mostly agree about what constitutes positive impact from data. I think we were using slightly different terminology when it comes to business value, and that's part of what we intend to explain today to get aligned and where we're coming from when we talk about this idea of business value. And just as a background, we originally started with the term data monetization, but then realized that, that was grossly inadequate for what we were trying to address. But we'll get into that. <laughs> so what is this business value? So that's what we're going to try and cover today and try and demystify the meaning. And you've heard it so many times in all the presentations today. We all use it, but we're all using it in different ways. And we all have probably a different meaning for it. Um, yeah, yeah, so we'll cover where, where data becomes wisdom and how it actually gets on that journey and how wisdom can help with your data as well. Another controversial topic, topic as well on LinkedIn. Um, the mountains of complexity, it's hard. We've seen this, we've talked about how, many, how long a data transformation takes, how many have been failures. We've all been working on projects which probably haven't met the business's requirements in time they wanted or met their expectations. And yeah, how can we navigate this business mountain? So, yeah, yeah. So let's start with the first one, the biggest, the elephant in the room. What is business value? And it's actually really important to talk about what is not business value. So I think there, or at least from our perspective, we feel like a couple of the definitions that we've seen in our careers are way too limited. And it's not that it's fundamentally incorrect to say that the bottom line is important. The bottom line is important. But if you only invest in data projects like a cash machine, if you expect to put a quarter in and get two quarters out every time, it doesn't work that way, generally. And I think that's where I'm aligned with Sol, who was saying, don't make project decisions just on business value. I assume she means monetary business value, yeah. where you're just looking at a direct return on investment. I think there are many projects where you can basically do that. Maybe some kind of an online advertising project. You improve performance, you bring in more clicks on an online retail site, you sell more merchandise, you get two quarters out when you put a quarter in. Most business projects do not correspond to that basic outlook. You have to think bigger than that to justify and build strong data projects. Okay, next thing, and this is something that uh, when I got into data and Hadoop was the hot thing, I saw over and over again. And that was this idea that business value was just data for the sake of data. And so, at Google, that was kind of true where MapReduce originated, right? Google built its business on crawling the web and analyzing data and providing search results and then selling people ads also driven by data. But for the vast majority of businesses, this does not work. And we've also seen the same thing with the modern data stack. I think the insightful teams learned to use the modern data stack to support other business goals. The, not so, the hype driven teams just said, we need data, get data, what are we going to do with data? We don't know, but just get it because it's important and it's going to change the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we on that one? Oh, yeah, next one, sorry. There we go. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I can pick this one. Yeah, so what is business value? So to have a constructive conversation about it, we need a definition. With a definition, we can all have an agreement of what we're talking about. Until then, we don't know what is what it is we're trying to look for. Um, yeah, and it's, well, do you want to do you want to cover? Yeah, so so it definitely needs to be concrete, right? Like we need a working definition that we can use in talking about investments. One thing that's very important to point out is the data is expensive. The technology is expensive, but especially the teams are expensive. As you quickly discover, if you're a CDO or something, those bills add up. You have to take them to the, the CFO and the CEO, and they start to ask questions. And so we need a concrete definition that can support those budget items, and also so we can assess the projects after they've happened to see what the impact is. But we also need a definition that is abstract enough and flexible enough to handle a lot of different use cases. And so use case might be Google, where they're basically a data engineering company from my perspective. That is what built Google is data engineering. Everything else was built on top of that. But you might be a very conventional, traditional company, like an airline or manufacturer or a healthcare company. How do those companies assess business value? You need a definition that can work for a lot of different use cases. There you go. So, what is business value? So this is the after many iterations and uh, maybe a few beers as well over the time of discussing it and debating it. Um, this is the working title we got that we got. So working definition. So business value is an evidenceable positive effect on the performance of your business. So we can unpack some of that. Yeah. So let's start with evidence. Evidenceable. I got my undergrad in physics. I mentioned I got a PhD in math. And so in academia, our definition of evidenceable is pretty stringent. In business, we can't find evidence to that degree. But often we have a pretty good idea of what's going on in our business from data. So for example, we might recognize that we have a very serious customer service problem. That's evidence of a problem. We can try to build a data project as part of the solution to that problem. And then we can analyze the outcome. That's the kind of evidence that we're looking for. And I think. Up until now, we haven't been very, well, we're data people, we're data professionals, but if people ask us how much value we provide, we say we can't, we can't, we don't know. And so how, you know, we need to eat, well, drink our own Kool-Aid. You know, if, if we're going to be, going to be getting that respect or that, that uh, trust from the, the business that, you know, we're going to provide them value, we've got to be able to evidence what we've done historically. And we've got some comparisons of how you can achieve that uh, in, in, a, in, an, in your organization by, uh, treat it, treating your business cases as a legal case, yeah. having the right representation with the right evidence to actually go and win a case. I think the next thing to look at, you want to yeah. advance? Yeah. How, it, it probably feels like with this definition that we're kind of kicking the can down the road because we've replaced, we re, we've replaced the idea of just financial bottom line with performance. But the idea from our perspective is that performance is in the eye of the beholder, meaning that each business has its own definition. And if you start asking the right questions within your organization, you can find out a lot about what is important for the performance of that business. So for example, ask this question, why does our business exist? Why did the founders create the business? And typically, unless it's a bank, they didn't create that business just to generate cash flow, right? They created it to manufacture high quality cars and democratize, say, auto ownership, or they created the business to um, serve customers through healthcare, yep. or they created the business to uh, bring great music to consumers, or they created the business to publish books. There are all kinds of different answers to this question, but you need to start asking those questions. And that involves also talking to a lot of people within your organization. And that is something that we as data people are not always great at, like going and finding the people who understand the answer to this, answer to this question, meeting them for lunch, meeting them for coffee, and finding out how the business actually ticks. And not just financially, but like, do they make products? Yep. What are the issues with those products? How do consumers use those products? Those are fundamental questions. Next question, what is our strategy? Okay. And I'll come, actually, yep. let's, yeah, let's jump yep. forward to that. Do you want to jump forward? Okay, I think, here you go. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, this is, this is one of my favorite recent quotes. And so, I don't think any, anybody wakes up and wants to start a company with the vision of generating cash to buy back shares and pay a dividend, right? <laughs> They're a byproduct of generating good products. And this, now notice Ron Epstein is basically a banker. Like he works as, he works for Bank of America. He's an aerospace consultant. And in this case, he's talking about an American manufacturer that's struggling with quality in a very fundamental way. Probably know what I'm talking about. But this is the kind of thing that you're looking for as a data person. Like what is it 
that makes that business tick, that's what you're after if you want to generate value in that company. <laughs> Next question, very closely related, what is our strategy? Yep, which, well, which we'll cover that in a minute of, of where, where the strategy fits into the overall business mountain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every, yeah, you need, and not just a data strategy, you need a business strategy. The data strategy just under, uh, underpins that. As Sol mentioned earlier, you know, without an AI strategy without a data strategy is not a strategy. It all starts with a business strategy. It's what the business is trying to achieve. Yeah. What are our values? That's another one. I think it's really good to look at the example of a nonprofit. Nonprofits are businesses too. They also need to bring in money. They need to execute work. They need to serve customers, which could be people that they're serving with their, with, um, their nonprofit mission. But for example, if I have a nonprofit, my value, my mission, might be that I want to lift people out of poverty by providing better education. That might be a value. But even if we're a for-profit business, we should have some core values that drive us. Like, we want to provide great products and great customer service. That would be a set of values. If you're looking for business value, look at those values. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And the next one, this is really important. What functions are essential for our business to survive? And sometimes data is really essential, right? So if Google or OpenAI stopped consuming data, what would happen to their product? It would get bad really fast. Google search results would go out of date. They would stop being useful. Google would lose market share really, really fast. I know they're all already struggling a bit, but like they're still doing pretty well. They would, they would fall, fail really fast if they couldn't fulfill this core function. If you're a manufacturer and your workers go on strike, your cash flow ends very, very quickly. If I'm a data person, I can say, okay, that manufacturing line, that is a survival function at that company, and that's where I wanna look for business value. If I can help that company with that core function, then they are going to perform better. So this is a, picking up from last year. Last year we had a panel, and one of the questions we were asked was, oh, what's the value of putting your socks on? And, uh, great question. Uh, right. oh, okay, well, Okay, well, our, well, yeah, so now, now we know what business value is. It's not ROI, but yeah, but yeah. Um, and yeah, not everything's easy to evidence into, into business value. But if you can actually evidence lots of things that your team are doing and successes, you won't get questioned on them having to buy them socks so they don't get blisters when they're actually doing the, the, the ski run. So, yeah, it, you don't spend too much time trying to find, to match the value to every single activity in your organization. You, you may be able to, but it, it's... It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be. You're not going to get one to agree to it as well. So, yeah. So, it, it, I, I call it. It's the oil, oil of your engine. You know, you, you, yeah. you don't, <laughs> you don't skimp on that because you know it's going to seize. So, there's you, you need, need to make sure that um, you're, you're providing the foundations to allow your team to succeed, even though that may not directly correlate to business value or, or financial business it's value specifically. Yeah. We oh, always right. want to think of these like fundamental functions as business value. But it might be hard to go to the CFO and say, here's how many dollars I made by putting my socks on. If you don't wear good socks and you go skiing, you go to race, you're probably going to have some problems, right? Or if you go cross, if you go uh, backcountry skiing, you might freeze to death or you might lose your feet from hypothermia. Lose your like. toes, yeah. And businesses have the same kind of core functions that we should look for. There you go, some important yeah. So these are some examples. I, I've kind of started with some of these already. So data project examples. Um, Look for those core functions. If I'm a manufacturer, say I'm a car manufacturer, if I deliver a really high quality product that builds my customer reputation, people are willing to pay more for that product. Um, if I don't do that, then my customer reputation recedes over time. I can't charge as much. And in fact, if I have to do a lot of warranty repairs and recalls, that can cost a huge amount of money and I may end up going bankrupt. And we've seen this happen in the car industry. And data in the modern car industry is absolutely essential to building a high quality car, but also tracking defects and narrowing down defects. And the best, the top tier manufacturers can track defects down to a single shift or a single batch of parts. And that way they don't have to do a warranty repair on the entire fleet or a recall on the entire fleet. They can target just a few vehicles and deliver a good experience for their customers when something goes wrong. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, um, we, we cover these ones? Uh, I'll go into the next one. Like exceptional custom, customer service, same thing. Data can drive an exceptional customer service experience. And that's the kind of, it's an essential function for many businesses. I would argue that if you're customer facing, 
it should always be an essential function as yep. we as data practitioners should look for those opportunities. Uh, same thing with the last one, business intelligence that you deliver to the CEO to help them shape their strategy, right? The yep. CEO is ultimately going to decide what the strategy is, but if they don't have a clear picture of your internal business or the external world, they're not going to be able to make good decisions. And I think you know, business, business intelligence, not in the cognitive stage we're talking about now, but business intelligence in the wisdom in your organization, and which leads quite nicely on to um, the business mountain, you know, the journey from data to wisdom. So I've done a few posts on this, and no one agrees. <laughs> uh, what starts first? Does information come first? Does data come first? We've seen it as a triangle. But we did a morph, was it the, the uh, Mo Mobius, Mobius strip, Mobius yeah. strip as well? But I think the, the clear thing is we need to get to the point where we're collecting our data. We're providing information or getting information from that data. We want to get the knowledge from that data. I think I did another joke of the fact that uh, you know, the chief data officer, we've got the chief information officer, what's next? We have a chief knowledge officer. And what's next after that? Do we get a chief wisdom officer? <laughs> um, so some examples, and, and there's, there's many ones out there, and I think Sol did one on, on tomatoes and recipes, but we have a ski theme one here at the moment, which is, you know, the data is the runs, the lifts, the weather. What lifts are open, and what ski runs are open? The information from that. What's the quickest and best route down? I've been told it's following me, but that's, that's maybe. <laughs> um, and I think the, the last one is, uh, knowing what data stay in the pub. To your point, earlier, what was the name, that German word? <laughs> so, here you go, it's, it's to know, okay, I know the weather, the conditions, that I'm gonna go straight to the pub. So, that's wisdom, how can you, but how can you get that wisdom from data? It's in your, it's in your you, you know these things. So, you're gonna have to traverse up from data to wisdom. Well, that's not the end of it. You gotta come back down it again to see what, from that wisdom, what you've gained, what additional data you could actually get to, to uh, replace the human in the loop for that wisdom. And you'll go all the way back around again. But and the, the other thing to mention is, this, there's not just one mountain in an organization. You've got many. And you'll have to repeat this many, many times to actually get, well, to actually complete the objective of uh, having a positive impact on your business performance. Because your business is not just one department. So that's where you've got the three mountains out there. So it's not a mountain, it's a mountain range. You're going to have the same. You have to do the same thing in your finance department, the same thing in the sales department, and the same thing in your marketing department. You have to win each of those stakeholders over. They may have different technologies. You may have to take some of the learning from one of those departments to take it to another, or maybe you've actually done such a good job for one of those departments that they, the other department says, "I want you to do this," rather than forcing it upon them. So you bring you're bringing the customers to you rather than a, rather than forcing a, a, a data project onto a department that may not want it. And that's where you have this cycle of competence, right? So if your organization starts out with a very low bit data competence, you focus on a specific use case that's higher priority. Yep. And then we'll, we'll get to this in just a second, but through cycles, yes. you build a global competence. So yeah, so wisdom, all that gold, is going to be hidden in many different areas. And if you get all of them, it may get, you get super wisdom when you combine the sales with your marketing and your, and your finance. Um, so I think we go on to now... Complexity. So, okay, we've got this data, we've got this information, we've got this wisdom in an organization. How the hell do we unlock it to actually get to achieve the objective of, of uh, having a positive effect on your, on your business performance? And I think we start on this. It all starts with company values and ethics. I've, I've had some debates on this, whether, whether what comes first, the strategy or your business strategy or your company and ethics or company values and ethics. Um, we believe that it's the bedrock of your business mountain. And the peak of your business mountain is the business strategy. And again, I'm going back, I think when I talked about this the other day, we were asking where's a data strategy ref, uh, refer to it, or how does it relate to a, a, a business strategy? Sorry, how does a data strategy relate? To, sorry, where's a data strategy relate to a business strategy? And where's AI strategy relate to your business strategy? So that you can't have just data on its own because you're never going to achieve it. We have too much dependency on other departments to, to, uh, to deliver any, any, uh, any project. Um, and I think the, the next, next point is, well, okay, you got this strategy. How are you going to pay for it? Is someone giving you some money? How much money you got? And what do you want to achieve with that? Because great having a business strategy that has sets of very, very high targets to achieve something, 
But without having the funding to achieve that, you're not going to. But to get that funding, you need to prove or be able to evidence the value you're going to provide or the business benefit you're going to provide from that. Um, I think the, the other thing we put up is, is, is a strategic vehicle. And, and we, we, we'll, we'll talk of, um, we have many projects in, in, in an organization, and they're all competing against each other. But if you have a data strategy where you know what you want to achieve, you can actually start using those strategy vehicles to build out your architecture runway. So <laughs> another thing I think we've failed or lacked on recently was we've had too much stuff engineer-led. Okay? We we've lost the role of the architect. Uh, I think, well, Bill Inman's done a, um, the rise of the data architects as, a, as another, another um, some articles recently. But yeah, it, it, it went away a bit. And I think there's a few reasons for that. We talked to one of the OPEX versus CAPEX um, scenario. Um, you didn't have to do that pre-planning. You didn't have to go to go and justify to go and get a budget of X many million for a project that's going to take three or four years because it just all comes out of the OPEX, um, OPEX pot and you just get increase your OPEX budget from one year to another, and you don't, you, it, it removes that strategic thinking, it removes that um, business roadmap or your, or your architectural runway to achieve that business roadmap. Hey, let me add to that, one of, in our book, Fundamentals of Data Engineering, Joe and I wrote, um, one of our architecture principles is that architecture is leadership. And so in our data practices, we really need leadership, and that's not just leadership to crack the whip and say, get this stuff done, it's leadership to say these are standard components and these are standard architectures and these are best practices and this tr is training and this is baseline knowledge that we'll have in this organization yep. to support our data strategy. And uh, yeah, so there's, there's only two more pieces of the puzzle here and people and culture. So you can't go and achieve your business strategy unless you've got the right people on the bus. You're not gonna be able to, to, um, to build uh, or build the projects that the, 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 um, your the business users need, unless you have the right people to deliver that. And the last piece of puzzle, which we always used to start first, and hands out, we're all, we're all data professionals, we've all probably put forward some target architecture of technology, but it, we should be flipping it around. What's that technology solving? How is it going to help with our, again, go back to that, the positive effects on your business performance? Everything should be looked at, but not, not um, not individually, but collectively, because you get a force multiplier. Certain things you do, you add things on it, it provides the ability to achieve even more. I, I use the, the analogy of the penthouse apartment in a 50 store building. That penthouse apartment only gets the value of 25 million or whatever it is for that because it's got so many other floors below it. You can't go and sell a penthouse unless you built the other 49 floors. So it's helping, on your ta on helping with your target objective. But I, I think one, one related current example is NVIDIA, NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA has been building an engineering culture for, since its founding mm -hmm. in the 90s. And that's why they're able to meet the moment with the AI boom right now. And the same thing applies with data, where we have to build that data culture so that we can meet the moment as those opportunities arise. So we've seen it's complex. There's many moving parts, and you can't just do one bit. You can't do technology without all the supporting factors around it. So, all right, so how, how do we navigate that? How do we achieve that? And again, with the, with the ski theme, um, we're going to use some, uh, a ski map to show this. So you start off small, a little pulley lift, just to get you up onto the bunny slope so you can practice your, your data modeling or your or tra your, traver your uh, traversing or your carving, which, whichever part of the, um, the delivery process you need to build up your skills, you can use it on a, a nice green run, simple objective, maximum chance of success, low cost, small team. You might choose a data set that doesn't have security issues. You might use a publicly available data set so you don't have to go through the CISO team to go and prove that out. But you find something that is going to um, prove the process or, or provide that force multiplier or the first part of it that you can build on top of. So there's your green run, your first one, you test it out. You may have had a few tumbles on the way. You, know, you may have, well, hopefully you didn't break your leg like that girl we saw the, the photo of earlier, but you may, it, may not, it may not be an easy, easy run. Um, but once you've done it once, you can do a bigger one, a bit, bit more fun, and maybe get down it, enjoying it a bit more, maybe not so tired. Um, but it's iterative. All right, so now you've proved it. Maybe you did a, an MVP with some homegrown 
a homegrown solution, but you want to up the level now. You want to go to a product that can achieve what you've proved you need to do, and but quicker, faster. More capacity as well. Bigger chair lift. Um, so this unlocks your intermediate. So more challenging use cases, building on the skills and culture, you're de-risking it, you know? So if someone, the same person had gone straight to that blue run, you'd get more accidents probably. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe um, more broken legs. So, um, but that's not that. You do, there's, there's more use cases out there. Um, you might put some more infrastructure in that can just prove it still works for your old use cases. Then you think, okay, right, we're okay now. Let's let's go. Let's 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 up the level a bit. Um, you add a red run in there as well. So each each time you're taking that lessons, you're taking that learning, but you're also delivering something to the business. Each one of those ski runs in this is a use case for the company, use case for your business. Each time you do that, you're building up trust with the business. Each time you're doing that, you're proving the technology that you've got in place and your processes as well. And yeah, then after that, you, you may want to keep your keep your uh, business users cold. Sorry, warmer on the journey. You give a nice bubble car, but it unlocks new uh, new potential that you wouldn't have been able to get to otherwise. And that's when you know you're now your team's an expert. Uh, they can they can tackle anything. The double da the double black diamonds or the 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 um, run that J Joe showed earlier in a uh, wherever that was um, the shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't done that one yet, but. Um, yeah, so it unlocks some, some new new opportunities, high value, you've reduced the risk on them, um, you've reduced the time you can deliver them, um, but you didn't go straight to them. I mean, you don't go straight and learn on a red run, do you, Ian? Where is he? Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> he, he, his first, his first uh, lesson was on a red run, and it was by me. So, um, yeah, and then, here you go. The last one is the uh, double black diamond. But that's that's not the only thing, you know. You, you, you may actually want to do some do some uh, uh, R and D. You might want to try out some new areas. You, you may, is this is this mountain worth building another lift on? You know, is it worth it? You might just get a ski do for that one, just a, a just a, a recce. Um, and then you can practice that in your R and D park. You know, you've put the yeah, you've got the medics nearby, so then it goes wrong. You know, it's contained. They probably put the uh, uh, the hospital very close vicinity to it as well. Um, but yeah, you, you, from the learnings from that, you know, you can take that, build, identify new things that can provide you a competitive advantage, and that's ultimately what you want from your organisation from its data. Um, so right. terrain parks, yeah. The thing I'll add here is that by the time you get to this last stage, it's expensive. It's not a panacea. It's not going to be cheap. You're going to have a big team, uh, but if you've spent all this effort delivering value, as we discussed to the company, if you have all these high impact wins, and in fact, you can go to the CEO and the CTO and say, these are opportunities that we've identified that you haven't thought of by working with your domain experts. What do you yeah. think? That's the last stage here. Yeah. Again, it's expensive, but it's also going to more than pay for itself in terms of the or overall impact on the organization. Exactly, so taking inspiration from, uh, from um, the terrain park, a little bit of a, oh, there you go. Some great advice for the terrain park, and I think it's it. it uh, I think as Mark showed on the on the your one, yeah, you can take you know, what you want to achieve from skiing <laughs> to the business. I think you can do the same thing from your snow park. What you want to achieve in your business is the same approach. You start small. You make a plan with an architecture runway. Hopefully, you always look before you drop. So make sure that productions are, you're not going to break production before you do releases. Um, you respect features to the other users, and I think. I'll spin this a bit, is that in your, in your, in your organization, you're going to have many competing um, or competing views on things. And you have to respect everyone else's. Um, and I think it's our job as you know, data professionals to, to help um, arbitrate difference of opinion of whose project needs to go in first and highlighting, but if we did it in this order, you're going to de-risk it and you're more likely to get there quicker, but we're going to do this project first. So, yeah, having, having, a, having the, the respect to... Um, review other people's uh, features, projects, um, uh, deliverables. And I think the last one is, is take it easy. Um, well, it depends on your deadlines and the, and the, and the, and the, and the product. But yeah, it, it's, it, you start small. You, know, you, 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 don't, you don't go straight to double black diamond. So build up your skills teams, build up their capabilities, build up your processes, build up your stakeholder management. Everything within that mountain needs to be built up 
you don't focus on one part. We've we've probably focused too much on technology for too long, and it's just the enabler to deliver the business value. So that's it. Anyone? Well, have we gone over time as well? But we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to talk about this over drinks later. Yeah. So and we we have we have the town hall later. Yeah. So any questions? This we we can yeah. we can cover it then. But thank you. <laughs>